So here we go. Basically we started off with our dumbbell eyes. Any color will really work. Um, I just go with red. I like the attracting a little bit, a little uh, contrast in there. Um, I'll also have the kind of recipe posted in the, posted in the descriptions below. Um, so starting off, the first thing to realize is that this this hook I'm leaving, or with this hook I'm putting the dumbbell eyes on the bottom so it's gonna ride like this. So you definitely wanna have your lighter colors on bottom, uh, darker colors on top. So first we're gonna start with Creel X. Um, today what we're doing is we're gonna have a little bit of this darker on top. It's kind of a goldish, dark brown gold color. Um, and then we're gonna work with olive on bottom. Uh, so, it, it, going with a darker pattern, um, this one has worked really well for me. Um, and this fly you can use on all different species too. Uh, for anything from trout to panfish, obviously you wanna size it accordingly for what you're targeting. Um, uh, predators, bass, I mean, all, all over the spectrum. So, it's definitely a very versatile fly, that's for sure. Um, let's see. So you want to do something like that. Um, and then you want to leave yourself enough off the front as well. There we go. That should do it. I'll leave it right about there. And you can go a little bit lighter on top because you're going to end up doubling this over. And we don't want this to go all the way back. You want it to be similar, basically the same as what it's on the bottom. But you're going to be, like I said, doubling this over. So. It's always good to have more material than you think you need because you can always cut it. And the nice um, way to do this one actually too is pull out a little bit more thread, half it over to where we are pretty good there. Oh, what happened here? There we go. Oh.
And we're gonna tie this in on the front first. You gotta train it a little bit with the thread. It also helps get a little saliva going on those fingers. There we go. That looks a little better. So, it kind of looks like it's going a little bit crazy right now, um, but what happens <laughs> when you break your fibers, or your thread, excuse me. Now, you have a couple options. That's basically the end of the fly right there. So these top fibers are similar, about the same exact length as the ones I cut before. You got the green trailing out the back, plenty of flash going. Um, you can add different materials up on the head. I like to leave it light like this. I think there's enough going on in it um, with the fly that I have good luck with it. Um, you can put a different, uh, you can put it on a dubbing on the front, um, build up the head a little bit bigger, use some different type of fibers, EP fibers, things like that if you like, want a bigger bulkier profile. Um, but one of the nice things with this fly is that these fibers move so much in the water with any current these things are really whipping back there and you can see they lay down in profile and that's about the profile I want right there so that's pretty good um, if anything I could actually almost add a little bit more on the bottom but I think that's pretty good there um, we're just gonna finish it off with let's do a couple half inches here to get it done Call that good, well, there we go. We'll call it good. Those half fishes will hold. And as always, we throw on a little bit, just a dab, glue. And there it is. That's your basic Creolex minnow. If you, and like I said, there's so many different variations. Um, I hope this one works for you and have good luck with it for me. Um, if you like it, let me know. Um, comment down below if you like, uh, hey, I'm always up for critiquing. I know I'm definitely not the best. I haven't been tying much uh, lately, uh, but uh, getting back into it. So here's the first one of many to come, the Creolex minnow brought to you by Hunt Trap and Horns. I'm Tanner and we'll catch you on the next one.